Hello everybody, welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 75. No end in sight. Whoa! It's the new year! Whoa! We still live on a rock where timing is everything, and that's literally why it's the new year. It's because timing. So, hope you're all out there enjoying your, again, your free shit. <laughs> literally everyone works for companies stealing from me, so I get dis disrespected and treated like a dirty animal by my own family. This is a wonderful year, and again, no end in sight. I've never met one person that isn't like everything I've ever said in these past fucking videos. Again, I come from an Irish, not an Irish Catholic, but a Catholic Christian community, and again, people are just insecure, trashy people. Um, just So today, just talking points and current events, and more stories and memories. Memories, sensories, memorialities, memorials, sensorials. Almost done with that too. Whenever I'm done with that, I never want one person to contact me about what I've done. I've been disrespected to, to, to a level where it's, it's not acceptable. It's beyond not acceptable. And again, I live on a planet run by 60 year olds with again. They would proudly take, from cradle to grave, proudly take their insecurities and convictions when it's really just scientific denial. So as soon as, as, soon as, the, as, soon as this fire sale fucking starts, it's never going to fucking end. And in the most non-violent way possible, Every single motherfucker that isn't me is going to die in shame because of your shitty, selfish behaviors until you're like 30. Again, it's not normal to whore around until you're 30, 35. It just isn't. And so it's disgusting. But again, just random talking points. How many variants? Again, this is another another quote. I watched the whole Candace Owens um, Daily Wire commercial, and she literally says, "Again, the pandemic. What if I told you the pandemic was planned for years?" She's a bimbo munch, she's got some dick in her pussy, she's got a little bit of money coming in, and now she's now she's queen. She, she runs everything. But on the same commercial it says, how many variants and boosters will it take you to see what is right in front of you? Yeah, it's called biology, it's called tolerance and exposure, right? You, do you, Candace, why don't you just eat food one time? Just, just eat once. You'll never have to eat again. You'll never need stimulus, you'll never need sustenance, you'll never need exposure to anything. <laughs> so, again, the Republic... Republican Party is an absolute AIDS, and again, I'm not liberal, I'm not a part of a party, I think for myself, and I prove things, right? But what's right in front of you, Candace, is genuine biological degradation of exposure to any molecule, right? Drink four beers one day, after drinking no beers, you're going to have a little headache. Drink four beers after drinking four beers, you're probably not. The more metabolites in your bloodstream are going to metabolize a substance, fat, substance faster, whatever it is. And so that's really good. Keep committing fraud. Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, you guys are like 100% being criminally prosecuted for this. I know I don't get human rights, but the minute this shit changes, right, Ben Shapiro, I should have love and fear of God as a Jewish person. You're going to wish you fear of God. I don't get mad. You know, you've again, way more intelligence than everybody else, and I prove things, right? I was talk, talking about a lot about my, again, the, the phrase living rent free in someone's head. At my level of intelligence, I cannot not deal with the, di the, the disrespect, the insecurities. I cannot forget these things. And so the only way for me to stop getting tortured is to remove myself from very insecure people, which is 7.8 billion people, and I can't even call my species mates or solar system friends to get me the fuck out of here. So I'm, I'm really stuck here. But I'm talking with my uncle. Again, I watched the... I watched the Jordan. I watched his most recent one. It was a conversation between Jordan Peterson, a theologian and a philosopher, and it was again Catholic. Again, the, I, I come from Catholic Christianity, but and again, like I said, referencing what I talked about with my uncle and aunt, he said they don't know what they're defending. Like, there's one history for all of us, and doing historical research to shed light on what actually happened in Jesus' life or any religious context or any historical context is a good thing. It helps people. It's knowledge, it's information, it's education. But during this conversation, again, I didn't really have anything super interesting to write down, but they talked about, again, how, the, how it's unfair to say the Catholic Church is against education. Depends on the point in history. If you're talking in the 400s to the 1500s, they did the most for education. If you're talking today, in that same conversation, the dude was like, if Catholicism helps me be a better husband, go fucking grow up. Just go work on yourself. Stop with the Jesus shit. If you want to go to church, fantastic. Work on yourself. That'll help you fuck your wife better. I'll have you better communication with your old spouse. Grow up. I've been saying the same shit for a legitimate 20 years. But, again, they said this, this to my uncle and my aunts, and this is, if you, need, if you need to go to church once a day, lie about the historical record of Jesus' life in the name of God, I can sure you're doing religion wrong. 
Okay, I can assure you of that. But again, it, it, I think and I believe. I believe in God. I believe in this. I think that. I prove things. Every single statement is that of that is a conjecture. Everything I do is proof. I literally just list them. And it's not even exciting. So, I just wanted to, and again, living rent-free in my head for the past three months after I got harassed because I don't have constitutional rights, it was Michael Jameson. Now it'll be my aunt and uncle for the next two weeks to two months until something else happens. And it won't stop. 20 years without, without two weeks to two months of this not happening. Never. I've only been documented for the past three years. Ask anybody who's ever known me, they're all the same level of fucking nothing. They're insecure, they're selfish, they're insulated from their choices, and they see nothing wrong with it. And then they have a mortgage, they can't pay their fucking bills, and they can't have any skill sets, so they're still poor, just like I say it every other fucking time. So to the Republican Party, to anyone who identifies as religious, you are the furthest thing from anything that is good. Fuck you. <laughs> but I watched The Island Boys and George on Impulsive. I don't know, it was just like a... Like a it was kind of news in the podcasting world, but just they, the Island Boys, up and coming musicians, walked off on George, who's a co host on the Impulsive podcast, after checking their jewelry. I agree about that. Another person, uh, if I don't know if that's me agreeing with that or if it was a quote from the actual thing, but I, I have the it, it, Island Boys seemed reasonable to me. I think to, to, to check someone's jewelry and I have no one wants advice. Like no one, nobody in the history of human beings have ever has ever wanted unsolicited advice ever. But he goes on the podcast. You know they have an actual diamond checker for the BBSs. A hey, this dumb shit's hit. But they check his jewelry, comes out real, and then George is just up in his up in their grill, literally and figuratively, like trying to give him financial advice. It's just like even if no one wants advice, fucking period. But this is and then and then after that. The one of the dudes says, you know, I'm thugging right, and then George says, I don't want threats. Like this is the level of patheticness. Now again, forget religion, forget all that shit. He said the level didn't forget religion. Denial happens to me in every context. I got zero religious, not Christian. I'm a person that helps. And if you learn from me, I, I hope something figures out at some point. Because again, this is not new to me. None of this is new to me. In my head, I was stuck completely since I've been 12. And maybe somebody else went into a temple at 12 and taught people things and they listened. Like I've already lectured on. But again, this is this is. We're going to antagonize you, we're going to antagonize you, we're going to poke at you, we're going to do all this, we're going to be like, oh, don't threat me. This is exactly and precisely what I'm talking about, about antagonism causing threats, and then, well, don't threaten me, well, don't antagonize somebody, disrespect them profoundly. Like, it's, it's a little bit of give and take, guys. And so, and I, I genuinely like the Impulsive podcast, uh, like, I like that better than fucking Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, Sean Carroll, Lex Friedman. At least, at least if they're a little arrogant, at least they own it, and they're not fucking pussy-ass academics. So I don't know, shout out the Impulsive Podcast. So I was, watching, I was watching Price is Right the other day, and I saw the most interesting thing I've ever seen on Price is Right. Um, so season 50, episode 71, there was four $1 spun in a row. Like, like literally in a row. All three contestants come up. I think it was for the second, the second spinning of the wheel. First chick comes up there, literally spins it, again, one time around. Not like it was like two times around. It was exactly one time around. Starts on the $1, ends on the $1. Next chick comes out, and they're all three girls, you know, not super, not spinning the wheel super fast. Next girl comes out, spins the wheel, one dollar. Next girl comes out, spins the wheel, one dollar. Now they're all three, they get the thousand bucks, and they need five or fifteen space for the ten thousand, or the dollar again for the twenty-five thousand. So all three get that, go back, first chick spins it again, one time around, one dollar again. Gets the twenty-five thousand dollars. Next chick comes up. Spins the wheel, doesn't hit the dollar, but gets like gets a ten thousand, and then the third chick spun it again and got nothing. So that was the most exciting. I was lit. I was turned up on the fucking prices, right? So that was pretty fun. So that's season fifty, episode seventy one. Um, in Ohio, there was a sixteen year old shot by her own dad by mistake entering her home. It just fucking sucks. I just saw that on the news. I have a corresponding story. My my father's grandparents had a home, my cousin bought the home, and my dad's side of the family, two, three of them live like literally basically on the same street. And so one day we're at my, my dad's side of the family for Thanksgiving, or probably Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, or just meeting up. <laughs> but my, my cousin's at his home, which used to be my grandparents' home, which my dad grew up in. And so my dad, my dad likes to do pranks. 
I, I figured out actually someone drew a big dick on my car on the back of I'm on a third floor apartment and when I park my car outside I can just see with the dew in the morning that someone clearly just drew a big dick on my car and I, I didn't notice it forever I was because it wasn't it's not like painted on there it's just like some I think I think it's like Duramax or just some sort of water repellent so it was like when the water repellent like kicked in I was like oh that's gonna do really good for the resale value of my car nice no idea who did it get a flat tire two weeks ago literally hit a screw just driving wake up one day my car's in the garage at my apartment go downstairs and the tires popped call my dad comes over and we're fixing the tire and I'm like he said, let me show you something really cool. And so I, I, I roll back my, my, my trunk cover of my truck. <laughs> and I said, look, someone drew a big dick on my car. And then my dad just starts burst out laughing. He's like, yeah, it was me. About like 18 months ago. I was like, fucking sweet, guys. I, I actually, actually thought it was funny. Again, I'm, I'm an OG dick drawler on other people's things. So I generally thought that was funny. But I was back to the story. The that I was telling was so my dad my dad's like into pranks and jokes and stuff like that fun stuff one day i don't know if it was like at night or really in the early morning my dad goes over to to my cousin's house which is the old grandparents house he starts banging on the door doesn't say anything he starts banging on the door banging on the door not saying anything my cousin who is it says nothing banging on the door my cousin has a lot of weapons literally cranked a shotgun. My dad was like, whoa, 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 Jeff, don't, don't shoot. And so after seeing that, that, that story popped in my head and I was just like, that's some fucking dumb shit to do. That is some dumb shit, Dad. <laughs> but to the, to that just sucks, whoever, whoever the 16-year-old that got shot by her own dad, it's definitely a sad story. Um, Ronnie Coleman and back problems and stem cell injections and the morality of taking them and eggs. Huevos. But eggs, why do, we, why do we eat eggs? Why is that a staple break, breakfast food? It's because they're stem cells. They're undifferentiated cells, so they can be integrated into your body easy, easier. So, this is another, again, Ronnie Coleman had, again, back problems. I'm a huge weightlifter. I'm sure anybody that knows anything about weightlifting knows Ronnie Coleman. But he just, I see he went up from 255 to 275, 285 after getting stem cell injections. So again, this is another just absolutely stagnated, retarded thing in the United States of America. Stem cell injections should absolutely be legal. I would 100% go get them for my back literally right now. But it's another thing. Just gotta, just gotta wait. Maybe one day we'll legalize cannabis. Schumer, if you don't do it by the fucking 420 this year, you have a personal lawsuit. You said it's going to be done. It better be fucking done. And again, I'm suing anybody anyway, any medical practitioner. So you gotta, you actually have to. Do, if things are proven and you don't listen, I can't fucking help you. But. I'm just seeing how the efficiency of stem cells, why they would work, is because they're undifferentiated. That is, that is why you do those things. Right? That's why you eat uh, all their cultures, at least whole food animals. Whatever the cell is, whether it's a fish, monkey, whatever, as we've talked about before, it's going to be materialized, integrated into your body more readily. So you should absolutely, we should get on stem cell injections. And again, I would just go to another country if I had my money, but I'm allowed to be tortured and no one gives a flying fuck. Uh, so we have some missionaries fully released from Haiti. And I have, don't do missionary trips. Again, if you want to spread the word of God, spread education. If you want to spread education, like, subscribe, notifications on. Smash that subscribe button. I gotta get 41 subs, baby. Three years of active YouTubing. At the, again, the highest quality that could exist. Again, I had to solve all this stuff first, boys and girls. Like, I had to figure this shit out before I started lecturing on it. Still can't get any traction in any meaningful sense. But again, the president was also assassinated in that country. But missionary trips are not, again, don't give people advice, don't go into other people's countries so they can see the light of God. Fuck that shit. If you want to help people, educate them. If you want to educate them, understand them. Don't walk into a place judgmental and say, here's how you survive, when you don't know what the fuck you're even talking about, by the way. It's not going to go well. It's certainly not at this point in days and age. Glad to see they were released, but don't do fucking missionary trips. Then again, just another way for pathetic people who need to say God once or twice and not beat their wives. And now they're going to go to another country instead of just changing their own community. No. <laughs> no. Um, my future Mr. Beast giving my first episode of the Rethink YouTube channel. I told you about how I tried to start a YouTube channel with my friend Chris. 
And the first episode was legitimately, because at the time I was selling weed, pretty much the only time I've ever had active cash flow, literally ever. But the plan was, you know, I had, I had about $1,200 in just free cash. And so I, I, would, I would go, and I would like actually like hang out with the homeless people. Like actually, like, hey man, there's this right on OSU's campus, let's go get a cheeseburger. And just go eat with them. Just go fucking eat a meal with them. Now, believe it or not, a lot of homeless people are homeless because they're actually doing shitty stuff. Not everyone, not, I don't want to give percentages, but like, you know, help, helping the homeless is certainly a good thing to do. But a lot, of, a lot of people will also manipulate you. And so there was this one dude, one homeless dude named Reggie, and I would see him all the time outside of the UDF at North, North High Street and Frambies. I always give him, you know, a buck here, five bucks here. And then one day, I was like, hey man, I'm literally going to give you $1,200 to go on vacation, and I'm going to make a video about it. Meet me back here at like five five o'clock in, in like three days, four days. You know, I had something to do, but like in a couple of days. And so he's like, "Yep, okay." So I, I, the day comes by, and I, I have the twelve hundred literally cash, and he doesn't show up. Like I literally got stood up by a homeless dude for twelve hundred dollars to to give him the the money. And the thought was was so good to make a video about it, and hope hopefully it goes viral. Give him the twelve hundred so he can go on vacation, and then hopefully by the time he comes back. The video had gone viral, and I have YouTube subscribers, and maybe get started a career. And this was in 2014, 2015. So again, super not a novel thing to do now, but at the time it really was. I couldn't, I mean, there was an, there was an original idea for me, but and I just watched, because I've been watching Mr. Beast's YouTube channel, but he gave a, one of his big videos was giving a homeless guy $10,000 in 2017. So this was a good, like, three, two to three years before I'd ever even seen somebody else doing a video like this. <laughs> but I got stood up by a homeless guy for $1,200 legitimately. Now, my, my honest thought is, is he was just kind of like panhandling like he didn't need the money. Like, I, I, I think, because like I said, I kind of knew the dude. And so he was just like, uh, I think he actually kind of like felt bad. That's, that's my honest reaction. But the point was, was, I was trying to make a YouTube video. I don't really fucking care. And that was my first attempt at a YouTube. And so now my, my future plans for my YouTube channel, I'm going to just get them for my 41 subscribers. I got 1.4%. 1, 1. Uh, viewership by my subscribers, so I'm sure you guys are all just whoa, 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 waiting on the next the next drop of the hat of where my channel's going. But again, I still run this for current events. I still run science and math as again as fast as I prove it. Again, there's limits to how fast I can prove things. Physical limitations of information transfer, Stephen Wolfram. Yeah, buddy. Good thing Brad can get paid in the meantime. But. Still do language lessons, we'll still do music, still, again, I just go in sports about composing. I, got a, I did a piece the other day, I got another piece about done. Um, but new things, I'm definitely going to do poker. Uh, again, I play poker pretty much daily. It's pretty much close, if not daily. But again, just for strategy, I'm going to figure out how to, like, you know, do the site. I'm, 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 I'm a millennial, sure, but I don't know how to necessarily do the split screen recording and make good quality content. So so got to, like, figure that out just from a logistics standpoint. But I'll still do poker. I'm going to do national park tours and animal documentaries. I just take a drone footage, go to a national park because I'm a big hiker. I like to walk, I like nature. If I can ever get some cash flow and actually fucking do something with my life. But, you know, just like take some drone footage, give you a little breakdown of a, of a national park, maybe document the local wildlife. And again, this thing from childhood I really like to do is like, we had a, you know, give, give me a report on the birds in North America. And just like go through like the sizes, the colors, the, the mating patterns, this and stuff like that. Something I would certainly like to do. Just very educational. Again, this is supposed to be an educational YouTube channel. I've got so much content, it'll be going onto my own website for sure. Um, gardening and cultivation. Again, I, I, I like gardening and cultivation, so I'll just be doing out, outdoorsy type of stuff as well. Cooking. I'm also planning a section called Whipping It in the Kitchen. We're going to drop a track and a snack at the same time. Basically, just cook a meal and write a song about cooking the meal and just just for fun, uh, I like to cook. Very amateur cook. Can't do it. Don't do anything super special. But I, I can make 15, 25 different meals, and so I'll definitely do stuff on cooking recipes. I think whipping it in the kitchen. I think that's gonna be a slapper, honestly. Um, that's really the, the future of where this channel is going, or my again my entire intellectual property is going, and my, my video content. Um, and the last the last thing for talking points, I'll give you a story. We've gone a little longer than I thought. But another thing Lex said in his, his podcast, I watched the, my New Year's Eve consisted of watching Michael Malice and Lex Friedman talk. 
Lex is way more convincing. Granted, you're going to jail, so you don't need to worry, really worry about your channel too much. But the, the, the jumpsuit with the, the chain is way more interesting than the suit. So do that again. Just less, less suit. I don't know. I thought that was fun. But he says, I can't understand torturing a child. Are you sure, Lex? You can't understand sympathizing with ti child torturers? Like, like you are right now? And again, I'm a 28-year-old man. Everything that I'm saying that I've been documenting for the past three years happened to the same level, if not worse, my entire life. And now those people are just like 15 years older. But again, they can't accept it into, into a profound level. So you can't understand torturing a child. I was tortured as a child until I was literally an adult. And it still hasn't stopped. Again, hypocrisy. Go, go through the hellfire. No, man, you just have to address your own hypocrisy. I don't give a fuck about any of you guys. Like, I don't want to associate with you fucking people. I want the fuck out of here. I have to put myself in the world to try to make money, and it doesn't work because I'm a fucking scapegoat. You can't understand torturing a child, Lex. You basically did it yourself. And if at least not you, you're sympathizing because you would act differently. And that's not me asking, that's me telling you. And again, I know no one listens to Brad, no one listens to this, that, that. Just a bunch of dog shit. So that's what I got for the talking points today. Um, I'll give you a story. So nothing, nothing super relevant to the talking points. Again, it was pretty all over the place today. But the, I told you about how I met my one of my business partners for the alcohol company. You know, literally just lifting in the gym. And the big dude comes over, is impressed with my weights. Get introduced to this guy. And then Marty, he's the one that starred started one of the you know 20, 40 episodes ago, whatever. But the, the, yeah, well, that mathematical proof that's still extremely there, just, well, calculus doesn't exist because I never took the classes, so therefore, let's devalue our alcohol company and not value, again, like our, our, our contract has, like, you know, a, a certain amount of legal support. I think I've covered the legal support myself. I got the cash for the, the business myself now, so it's, like, sweet. But get introduced, introduced to my partner, Marty. He lives out in Philadelphia. So the first time I go to see him, ironically at that time I had actually literally just had a very bad back injury. Like I said, my back's pretty shitty right now, but it's like it's just like 85% just like hasn't gotten better. So I, don't, I just don't know. But at the time I was going to go meet Marty for the first time in person. I had a real bad back thing, had to delay it a week or two. I go out to Philly, you know, just meet and greet, see, hey, what's up? You know, we had talked on the phone for a long, long fucking time. But, you know, going back and forth about business plans, we applied for the Black Lab Botanical for a, a medical and recreational uh, licensure in Pennsylvania. Didn't get that one, obviously. Again, what is the fun, fundamental theorem of the world exactly? Don't be Brad Bowes. That's really the fucking answer. But, we go out there, and he's from, from, from South Jersey or North Jersey or somewhere in Jersey. I don't know New York or Jersey at all, but he's from the area. And... You know, he's, he tells me the story about, you know, one day being on the beach. Well, first, first he, I don't know if he was an associate of the mob or just, like, he grew up with the guys. We'll just pal around with a little. I don't, I don't think he was an associate. But def, definitely, he just gave me a story. I'm not trying to give a vicarious story, but that I don't know too much about. But he just told me, you know, like, he, he ran around with them for a little bit, you know, in, in his youth. But then he tells me another story about, you know, one day he's walking on the beach and an actual mob guy made guy you know, said something to him or something, and he had a, a hot temper, and literally just turned around and punched him in the face. I, just, I don't, know, don't know if it's real or not. It seemed pretty legit. Mar Marty can be a little it, aggrandizing a little bit. Like I said, for the most part, I, I like the guy, my, my partner Marty, but, but it just, I'm just not, uh, I, I don't, I'm not a salesman. I don't do shit like that. Here's, here's my property. Here's what it's worth. Like, oh, we're so incompetent, we doubt it. Fuck you. I was like, okay, well, fuck you. But, that that happened again. Go go to Philadelphia, hear that story, and then again the the yeah well conversation again. I don't talk to these people regularly because again they can't respect. Me. It's it's like it's our company and it's devalued profoundly because of crime. My partner's a lawyer. And it's like shouldn't you like do something? <laughs> like, but I don't know. But then again, you know I, I give a I give a, a lecture or story about you know you people, the emphatic you, and then I turn on my YouTube subscription and there's Michael Franzese sitting up there saying, giving a story about you as being condescending, again, tr trying to connect, trying to echo the same shit. And so I'm sitting there like, okay, here's, here's Michael Franzese and Sammy Gravano, clearly, t like, someone's giving them my information, for real, for sure. 
And so, like, I had these stories from Marty, and so, and he was, he also was, because he was, I don't know if it was because he punched the dude in the face, and again, this, these, are, these are hearsay stories, I don't, they could be very well true, could not be, they just really don't know. But then again, he had some sort of tiff with, with actually Nick, Nicky Scarfo. And so, Sammy the Bull's up there every single day talking about his, his dealings with Nicky Scarfo. So I'm just like, here's my literal actual business partner, here's actual mob dudes on the internet talking about, it's the same, like, area. And so, so I'm in a text conversation with, with my partner, Marty. And again, it's always condescend to me, disrespect me, and I'm going to, like, like, want to do business with you. And the thing that upsets me about the alcohol is it should be valued, like, a billion dollars already, but it's criminal. And then it's like, I'm still, like, the wannabe entrepreneur. I'm still trying to get into the game. No. And so I'm like, <laughs> I literally tell my partner, you know, uh, you know, call, fucking call Sammy Gravano or Michael Franzese. And he's like, I don't, I don't know them. And then I was like, okay, well then maybe you don't know Nicky Scarfo and that shit on the beach never happened. And he says, I can give you an introduction if you want. I don't want an introduction, man. I want our business to be valued at a reasonable fucking valuation because of crime. And he's like, like the most bona fide fucking career criminals ever. And it's like, now we're just all just going to run a YouTube channel. What a bunch of fucking pussies. God damn. Real story. Still, still ongoing. <laughs> I don't want an introduction. I just want a fair valuation for my fucking company. So I thought that was funny. Again, small world. Maybe a tall colony here or there. Who knows? Well, that's what I have for today. No one in sight. Americans, human beings will never publish scientific information, promote cannabis to stop literally killing people. They'll just, they'll just, no one gives a fuck who, who lives or dies, and people are so incompetent and insulated, they're just going to run their YouTube channel, stay low-key, and do the wrong thing literally every single fucking step of the way. So, I'm sure I'll be back tomorrow with something. Again, i got another music piece done. I'll probably do some more guitar lessons soon, and new language lessons whenever. That's my, the future content I've got planned for sure. And again, like I said, I'll keep running this one, keep running the science one. And ho hopefully before, again, I, I, I have an honest bet I will not live a single day of my life before the age of 30. People just do not give a fuck. I've been pushed out. I'm allowed to suffer. And at this point, people like learning from me I, when I'm suffering. If, if I stopped suffering, I would teach you more things. I would work more. But that's, again, I watched another, some fucking Asian chink on Lex Friedman's podcast. Again, dude, insulated from any real decision making in his entire life. And he's like, you know, what's life without suffering? It's life. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And, and people who have never suffered think it's like again, like something to desire for, like in mental stimulation or intellectual discovery. No, it just literally slows you down. But nobody cares. I'm so prolific. No one gives a fuck. And I am again doing a, a fifth, not a fifth, five percent of what I could do. I edit everything I do myself, and I hate myself. The thing that slows me down the most is putting up a video, putting up 341 videos, and I think my channel now has like 10,000, like 700 views total. 41 subs. And just people deny me in all contexts. I am not allowed to exist, and here I am. So, see you next time. Part 75, no end in sight, because there isn't.